Hello, hello, I'm Beth Joey and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. This is a channel where I paint my face, turn my camera on and talk about some books. There are many reasons to not enjoy Valentine's Day. This is probably one of my favourite days of the year because I'm an absolute hopeless romantic, but I understand that it is not the case for everyone. Some people don't like Valentine's Day because they think it's cliche. Some people don't like it because they're not in a relationship. Some people just hate chocolate. I don't know. So I have made a video especially for those of you out there who do not love it as much as I do. And that is some anti-Valentine's Day book recommendations. Let's just get started straight away with One by One by Ruth Ware. So it's based around a music app called Snoop, which is similar to Spotify, I guess. But the difference with Snoop is that you are able to snoop on what any public person on the app is listening to at any point in time. The company is facing an incredibly intense decision in that they are tossing up between going public uh, and IPOing or potentially just selling out. The shareholders are very much split down the middle with only one person being the deciding vote and that is the sort of cast out receptionist by the name of Liz. So in the effort to convince her to their side, both parties arrange a ski holiday to the Alps and then an avalanche falls cutting the entire group off from escape and people start to go missing and then people start to show up dead. And they're all trapped in this one little chalet together trying to figure out who the murderer is among them, what their motives are, and how the hell they're going to get out of this alive because they are running out of supplies, all the electricity is cut off, they are not going to last much longer. Next up we have another book that is sort of along the same strain and that is How to Kill Your Family by Bella Mackey. I think I have mentioned this book before. It's about a woman who is imprisoned for a murder that she didn't commit but that does not make her innocent because she committed a number of other murders that she was never discovered to have committed. It's essentially a timeline of events as she takes you through the setup, the act and the cover up of each murder. And her motive is that her mother was abandoned by her incredibly rich father. And so she believes that she is entitled to the money, the inheritance of this particular billionaire. So she proceeds to kill everyone who could possibly get in her way, cousins, grandparents, siblings, everything, so that she can claim this inheritance and live what is her happily ever after. It's really, really interesting as you follow this person who is clearly a narcissist and clearly doesn't see what they're doing as wrong. They see it as what they deserve. This is justified because of the horrors sort of committed against her mother. And you watch her being super, super blase about it as she kind of recounts in a, um, in a timeline sort of manner everything that happened and how she ended up in prison and what that one murder was that she didn't commit and why she was suspected of it. So yeah, this is another one that is literally the opposite of a romance. Next up we have Red Rising by Pierce Brown, which is a book that is less anti-romance because there is a minor, minor, minor romantic plot in it. Like minor, minor, minor. Um, but it is more fantastical and that is what will throw you out of Valentine's Day. Red Rising is the first book in a trilogy which follows Darrow, who is a red who lives on Mars. Now what this means is there is a class system on Mars with golds being at the very very top and reds being at the very very bottom. The reds have been slaving away in the mines on Mars trying to produce helium-3 which is a substance that they're being told will enable life on Mars. As far as they know there's no life on there currently and they're doing the very important work so that people can come to Mars. Now unfortunately they have been absolutely brainwashed. There is life on Mars. Darrow finds this out and joins a rebellious group and becomes a gold so that he can sort of take apart the system from the inside. It's a Hunger Games style book in that he's thrown into an arena with a number of other golds and forced to compete for their survival and also for a position in society once they graduate from this academy that's sort of organizing this whole event. Darrow not only has to survive, he has to make everyone believe that he is what he isn't. Next up we have My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyinkan Braithwaite which is 
completely against romance in such a way that one of the main characters in this book kills every person that she's in a relationship with. My sister the serial killer follows two sisters. The first sister is Ayula who gets into a string of relationships that somehow seems to end in the death of everyone that she's ever been in a relationship with and the deaths are all very suspicious. And then the second sister is Karidi who helps Ayula cover up each of these deaths or murders because let's be frank we all know they're murders. Um, because she has this sense of protectiveness for her sister. That is until Ayula starts to show interest in the man that Karidi has been in love with forever. And so Karidi is forced to choose between the sister that she feels responsible for and feels the need to protect and the man that she is in love with. And lastly, we have The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. Looking back on the books that I've talked about in this video, I'm realizing there is significantly more murder mystery than there is fantasy. So I guess this is just really a list of books that involve murder to get you out of the romance mindset. So sorry about it. <laughs> the Thursday Murder Club though, I think is sort of a murder mystery comedy. It has made me laugh so many times when I've read it. I think it's hilarious. I love it. The Thursday Murder Club is essentially a group of people in a retirement village who set out to solve a bunch of cold cases that the police have never been able to solve. And then in their very own community, a person ends up dead and then another one, and then they find evidence of a decades old murder. So the club sets about solving this current case. The thing that I find really funny about it is that these elderly people completely bamboozle the police, just throw them for a loop. And there's this one scene where they manage to link everything back to cake in order to get information out of the police and just kind of throw them off. So uh, you end the scene with this one police officer with a bunch of cake in his lap and he's kind of looking at like, how the hell did this happen? How did I just give away all the facts of the case without realizing it? The other thing I love about it is that there's so many twists and turns. It really keeps you on the edge of your seat because every time you think you've solved the murder, it's just justified away. The actions of that character are just explained so well. So those are my anti-Valentine's Day recommendations. I hope whether you celebrate Valentine's Day or not, you have an incredible day and do what you want to do. You spoil yourself, you love yourself, everything like that. And let me know what sort of books you're going to be reading today or over this sort of romantic season, because I'd be really interested to know who's sort of leaning more towards romance and who's leaning more towards some of the murder mysteries that I've mentioned in this video today. As always, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified when I release new content. No pressure, don't do it if you don't wanna, don't come for me. Other than that, I will see you in my next video. Bye.